Hey friends, welcome to Nursing Online Education. In this video, we will be discussing important question and answers of different nursing comparative examinations. Guys, let's get started. Here is our first question. 1. A client with a history of hypertension develops sudden epistaxis. Which intervention is most important for the nurse to implement? A. Encourage the client to blow their nose to remove blood clots. B. Assist the client to lean forward while pinching the nose. C. Apply heat to the nasal bridge to promote vasodilation. D. Place the client in a supine position with the head elevated. The answer is option B. Assist the client to lean forward while pinching the nose. 2. A client is being discharged after treatment for epistaxis. Which instruction is most important for the nurse to include in the discharge teaching? A. Use a humidifier at night. B. Avoid straining during bowel movements. C. Avoid taking aspirin or NSAIDs. D. Limit fluid intake to prevent further bleeding. The answer is option C. Avoid taking aspirin or NSAIDs. 3. A client receiving oxygen therapy via nasal cannula complains of frequent nosebleeds. Which action should the nurse take first? Decrease the oxygen flow rate. B. Apply a water-soluble lubricant to the nasal mucosa. C. Switch the client to a non-rebreather mask. D. Encourage the client to blow their nose gently. The answer is option B, apply a water-soluble lubricant to the nasal mucosa. 4. The nurse is caring for a client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, receiving 2 liters per minute oxygen via nasal cannula. The client develops epistaxis, which nursing intervention is appropriate to prevent further nasal irritation. Switch the client to a Venturi mask. B. Increase the humidity level of the oxygen. C. Increase the oxygen flow rate. D. Discontinue oxygen therapy temporarily. The answer is option B. Increase the humidity level of the oxygen. 5. A client receiving oxygen therapy through a nasal cannula reports dry nasal passages and frequent nosebleeds. The nurse should instruct the client to a. Increase the oxygen flow rate to decrease dryness. b. Use a petroleum-based ointment in the nostrils. c. Use a humidifier along with the oxygen. d. Alternate the nasal cannula between each nostril. The answer is option C. Use a humidifier along with the oxygen. 6. A client on long-term oxygen therapy experiences frequent epistaxis. Which of the following measures should the nurse recommend to the client to reduce the occurrence of nosebleeds? A. Increase oxygen flow rate to compensate for dryness. B. Use saline nasal spray regularly. C. Wear a nasal plug to prevent bleeding. D. Alternate between nasal and mouth breathing. The answer is option B. Use saline nasal spray regularly. 7. A patient presents with clear, watery drainage from the nose following a head injury. The nurse suspects cerebrospinal fluid. CSF, rhinorrhea, which of the following assessments would best help confirm the presence of CSF in the nasal drainage? 
A. Assessing the color and odor of the drainage. B. Performing a glucose test on the nasal drainage. C. Sending the drainage for bacterial culture. D. Checking for the presence of red blood cells in the drainage. The answer is option B, performing a glucose test on the nasal drainage. 8. The nurse is assessing a patient who sustained a head injury and has clear fluid leaking from the nose. When the fluid is collected on a gauze pad, a yellowish ring forms around the clear fluid. What does this indicate? A. The fluid is likely nasal mucus. B. The patient has a skull fracture with CSF leak. C. The patient is dehydrated. D. The patient has an upper respiratory infection. The answer is option B. The patient has a skull fracture with CSF leak. 9. A patient is recovering in the PACU after a tonsillectomy. Which assessment finding should the nurse monitor for that may indicate a complication? A. Swelling of the throat. B. White patches on the tonsil bed. C. Frequent swallowing. D. A mild throat pain. The answer is option C. Frequent swallowing. 10. A nurse is educating a parent of a child who has just undergone a tonsillectomy about dietary restrictions. Which food should the nurse recommend avoiding in the immediate postoperative period? A. Soft scrambled eggs. B. Cold ice cream. C. Spicy foods. D. Mashed potatoes. The answer is option C, spicy foods. 11. Which statement by the patient indicates a need for further teaching regarding postoperative care after a tonsillectomy? A. I will take my pain medication as prescribed. B. I can return to normal activities immediately. C. I should drink plenty of fluids to stay hydrated. D. I need to watch for any signs of bleeding. The answer is option B. I can return to normal activities immediately. 12. A child has just returned to the surgical unit after a tonsillectomy. What is the most appropriate positioning for the child immediately after surgery? Supine with the head flat. B. Lateral with the head of the bed elevated. C. Prone with the head turned to the side. D. Sitting upright with the legs dangling. The answer is option B, lateral with the head of the bed elevated. 13. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates understanding of the importance of head elevation after tonsillectomy? A. I can lie flat as long as I keep my mouth closed. B. Keeping my head elevated will help me breathe better and prevent bleeding. C. I can elevate my head only when I feel like it. D. It doesn't matter how I position myself after surgery. The answer is option B. Keeping my head elevated will help me breathe better and prevent bleeding. 14. A patient is recovering after a tonsillectomy and reports a pain level of 8 out of 10. Which of the following interventions is the most appropriate for managing the patient's pain? A. Encourage the patient to take deep breaths. B. Administer prescribed pain medication as ordered. C. Apply ice packs to the throat. D. Encourage the patient to drink warm liquids.
The answer is option B. Administer prescribed pain medication as ordered. 15. What is the first step a nurse should take to open the airway of an unconscious adult patient? A. Perform abdominal thrusts. B. Administer oxygen. C. Use the head tilt, chin lift maneuver. D. Insert an oropharyngeal airway. The answer is option C, use the head tilt, chin lift maneuver. 16. In which scenario is the jaw thrust maneuver the preferred method for opening the airway? A. In a responsive patient with a sore throat. B. In an unresponsive patient without suspected spinal injury. C. In an unresponsive patient with suspected spinal injury. D. In a patient who is choking on a solid object. The answer is option C. In an unresponsive patient with suspected spinal injury. 17. Which cranial nerves are primarily responsible for the gag reflex? A. Cranial nerves 7 and 9. B. Cranial nerves 9 and X. C. Cranial nerves V and 7. D. Cranial nerves 8 and 12. The answer is option B, cranial nerves 9 and X. 18. A nurse is preparing to assist with the administration of anesthesia for a patient undergoing surgery. The anesthesiologist applies cricoid pressure. What is the primary purpose of the Selic maneuver? A. To facilitate intubation by aligning the airway. B. To prevent aspiration of stomach contents during intubation. C. To provide tactile feedback during endotracheal tube placement. D. To increase the volume of air entering the lungs. The answer is option B. T. O. Prevent aspiration of stomach contents during intubation. 19. A nurse is assessing a child suspected of having epiglottitis. Which of the following findings is most characteristic of this condition? A barking cough and strider. B. Drooling and difficulty swallowing. C. Low-grade fever and runny nose. D. Hoarseness and wheezing. The answer is option B, drooling and difficulty swallowing. 20. Which of the following actions should the nurse take first when caring for a patient with suspected epiglottitis? A. Administer a corticosteroid. B. Suction the airway. C. Assess for oxygenation and keep intubation tray ready. The answer is option C, assess for oxygenation and keep intubation tray ready. 21. A patient is experiencing anaphylaxis after receiving an injection of a medication. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer antihistamines. B. Position the patient supine with legs elevated. C. Administer epinephrine as ordered. D. Start an intravenous infusion. The answer is option C, administer epinephrine as ordered. 22. When assessing a patient with respiratory distress, which location of retraction would be most concerning for the nurse? A. Intercostal area. B. Substernal area. C. Suprasternal area. D. Costal margin.
The answer is option C, suprasternal area. 23. A nurse is caring for a client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. The client is receiving oxygen through nasal prongs at a flow rate of 2 liters per minute. The client's oxygen saturation is 90%, and they are alert and oriented, which action should the nurse take? A. Increase the oxygen flow rate to 4 liters per minute via nasal prongs. B. Switch the oxygen delivery system to a non-rebreather mask at 10 liters per minute. C. Continue the oxygen therapy via nasal prongs at 2 liters per minute and monitor the client's oxygen saturation. D. Change to a simple face mask at 6 liters per minute to provide a higher concentration of oxygen. The answer is option C. Continue the oxygen therapy via nasal prongs at 2 liters per minute and monitor the client's oxygen saturation. 24. A nurse is caring for a client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, who is receiving oxygen therapy via a simple face mask at 6L slash min. The nurse is concerned about carbon dioxide retention due to the high oxygen flow rate. What should the nurse do next? A. Increase the flow rate to 8 liters per minute to ensure higher oxygenation. B. Switch to a non-rebreather mask for higher oxygen concentrations. C. Decrease the flow rate to 2 liters per minute and switch to nasal prongs. D. Continue with the simple face mask at 6 liters per minute and monitor the client. The answer is option C, decrease the flow rate to 2 liters per minute and switch to nasal prongs. Thank you for watching.